All right, there, Mark from Six Plus, with another instalment for you Fire Slayers players out there, or anyone that's looking into Fire Slayers or wanting to know what they can do on the board from the third edition book. And hopefully, you can see by the title, it is going to be on about that artifacts of power. So, if you want to follow along at home and you've got your own battle tone, all the information you need starts on page 59. So, let's crack on. And see what we need to do. So our fact power, there's three categories. Heirloom to the Lodge, which is for your rune fathers and your rune sons. Artifacts of the Forged Temple. And Relics of the Feared, which is for any Fire Slayer hero. I do like that. That they've given you options for any um, hero that you may have. Great. So... You got Master Rune of Unbreakable Resolve. Really, really like this one. Once per game, at the beginning of any phase, you can use this artifact. Give the bearer a three up ward. Now, if you know a lot of pain is coming towards that general, maybe it's a Rune Father of Magma Droth, you can break this rune and they got a three up ward. Really, really simple. Once per game, I need to hold. This area, you need to break the enemy's deployment with your, you know, general or hold this objective or whatever. Great. Absolutely great. Now, the fiery ring. Once per game, pick an enemy unit or an enemy, sorry, within six inches of the bearer, roll a dice on a two plus. That unit suffers D6 mortal wounds. I'm not convinced by this one. It's great that you could go and kind of half character snipe. So you could have your rune father or rune son near a support hero that may be whittled down to maybe two, three wounds. And you may have the option to pop them off with the D6 mortal wounds. Problem is, is on a two up. Is a once per game ability, very short range on a two up. I hate to say it, it could be one of those ones that is really clutch. The support character is only on, on one wound, and you roll a one. No mortal wounds. Or you roll a three to cause more mortal wounds, and you roll a one on your d6. I don't like how swingy that is for once per game ability. Just once per game. It's far too swingy for my liking. It's cool. Like you could be going, ah, and like imagining the dwarf just burst in flame out of their hands. But, because yeah, the, uh, this ring is set with a dark ruby that when activated unleashes a torrent of fire. Yeah, so you just shoot and fire out of their hand. Great, but it's too swingy. Your ma mileage may vary. But I don't like once per get uh, game abilities. I like that. Now, you've got the magnetized runes. Add two to the charge rolls made for the bearer. Simple. That is great if you give, uh, say... Then the command trait of Fury of the Fire Slayers that I went over in the previous episode. Which gives plus one to charge rolls for Fire Slayer units wholly within 18 of this general. That includes themselves. So they got plus three to their charges. That's great. That's genuinely, genuinely great. They are, they've got such a better threat range now. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. Now, another one. Axe of Grimnir. Pick one of the melee... Yeah, pick one of the bearer's melee weapons. Improve the rend characteristic of that weapon by one and add one to the damage characteristic of that weapon. Now, that's the bearer's weapons. Not a magma drop or anything like that. That is just their weapon. Now, the example I've given is... Take the Rune Sun with the Ancestral War Axe. You now increase it to Ren 2, 3 damage, and they got 5 attacks. 
They do have an ability that they cause more damage against monsters on a 6 to wound and so on and so forth. But I'll come over that when I go on the rune stunts. The 3 attacks, Ren 2, no, 5 attacks, Ren 2, 3 damage. That's great. That's genuinely great. Do apologise, got a bit of a block nose. <laughs> Allergies are playing up. Now, let's go over to the artifacts of the rune at uh, the Forge Temple. One moment. Um, Ash Cloud Rune. Once per battle at the start of your enemy's enemy hero phase, you can say the bearer will call down a column of soot. If you do so, until the end of that phase, units wholly within 12 of the bearer are not visible to enemy units attempting to cast a spell. That is so good. But the because so many spells that debuff you or cause damage to you need line of sight. You just stop them for that whole turn. Doesn't matter. Teplus, Nagash, Marathi, all the big magic players out there. Nope, you can't touch any of my guys wholly within 12 of that priest with any form of magic. That's great. No roll off, no nothing. You just break the rune and it comes down. Great. Love it. Now you have the Brazier. When the Barret attempts to summon an invocation, you can re-roll the chanting rolls for the bearer and the range of the prayer is doubled. Do apologise about the nose. If you are going invocation heavy and your invocation is very important to you, this is a must have. You could have your invocations running amok in the middle of the enemy line. If you want the wall up right front in front of your enemy, it's great you are guaranteeing that rune, uh, that invocation, sorry, to go off far, far more reliably. However, if you haven't really, you're not really too worried about invocations, don't need to worry your time on it. Now, this one, the Drop Helm, I love it. Add one to the wound rolls for attacks made by claws and horns by friendly magma drops wholly within 12 inches of the bearer. If you are going magma drop heavy and running, say, Lothnir to support that with your plus two wounds to your magma drop units and three of your magma drop units can have a different mount trait and rune sun on magma drops or battle line, why not take it? It's a straight up buff. You make all your damage to attacks. Twos to wound. It's great. Absolutely great. Now we're on to the. Standard relics that everyone can take. First one. Uh, draft of Magmelt Ale. Once per battle at the start of the combat phase, you can say that this bearer will drink their ale. If they do so, double the attack's characteristic of the bearer's melee weapons until the end of the phase. Now, that's the bearer. If you do have a son or father or even battlesmith on Magma Drop, the Magma Drop is not included. However... If you use this in combination with command traits, like I've given, so you've got Blood of the Berserker going off on, say, your Rune Father. Blood of the Berserker allows you to fight twice. But the second time, you fight last. But, <laughs> you could go crazy. 16 attacks with a damage 3 axe in one turn. That's nothing to sniff at. Genuinely, genuinely nothing to sniff at. That's scary. Once per game, you just go, 
cool. I'm going berserk and I'm getting drunk and I'm going crazy. You know, your opponent's going to have to think carefully about that one. Uh, now, the Demon Slayer. Demon Slayer. Pick one of the bearer, uh, bearer's melee weapons. Ward rolls cannot be made for wounds and mortal wounds caused by attacks made with this weapon. This one has saved my bacon a couple times. It is so, so good. Uh, Grimrath Berserker or Rune Sun. I love it on the Grimrath Berserker. Because the Grimrath Berserker, you can make them fight twice on a two up or they get to fight twice if they die. And they have their own oaths. You can give them an oath that causes a mortal wound in addition to normal damage on a six to wound. So you're just making sure all these failed saves that your opponent, you know, they, they failed, are going through. They can't ignore it. It is so, so good. So good. Uh, then you've got the icon, Nalcidian icon. This artifact of power can only be given to a battlesmith. Each time a friendly fire slayer unit wholly within 12 of the bearer is affected by a spell or the ability of an endless spell, you can roll a dice. On a 4-up, ignore the effect of that spell or the effect of the endless spell on that unit. Great. 50-50 chance. Oh, you tried to do something to me. Nope, gone. Great. If you have a lot of magic in your local community maybe worth a shot maybe worth taking it it's something that your opponent has to think about they generally have to be like oh wait a minute they got 50 50 chance to ignore the effect you don't stop the spell it's not like techless goes this is irresistible. You cannot stop it. You haven't stopped it. You just ignore its ability on a one of what in a 50 50 chance. So good. So, so good. But thank you. Thank you all for watching to the end. It's very much appreciated. I do apologize about the nose. I'm going to take some tablets in a minute and just knock it back down. But. Do hope this video has helped. As always, any questions or any experience you've had with your Fire Slayers, please comment down below. Very much appreciated. And if you know anyone that wants to know about Fire Slayers, please send them this way. And as always, if you haven't already, please like, comment, subscribe. It's very, very much appreciated. And any, uh, all, you know, links are down below in the description. But as always, you take care of yourself and I'll catch you in the next one.